Hi, welcome to Kitchen Matters. I'm Cami, and today we're going to be exploring the science in your kitchen by talking about amorphous solids, sugars, and some of the tricks that work with glasses that also apply to amorphous solids such as sugar in your very own kitchen. If you've watched some of our other videos on solidification or you're thinking about sugar in your own kitchen, sugar is most often seen in the kitchen as a crystalline solid or something that has an organized crystal structure. In contrast, amorphous solids are solids where the parts aren't put together in any particular order. The solid is just kind of packed together in a random way. Glass that you see in everyday life is a great example of an amorphous solid. It's shiny, it's brittle, it breaks very easily, and it can also do things like trap air bubbles inside it. Because it doesn't have a particular structure, it can be melted until it's soft, shaped a particular way, and then allowed to cool. Sugar is actually also able to solidify in a less organized amorphous shape. A good example of this is toffee. So toffee is made when sugar and butter are cooked together and then poured to let cool on some flat surface. Now this is another shiny solid that breaks easily and breaks at pretty much any angle you want. There's not a particular structure in this material that's causing it to want to break a certain way. This is because the butter that you add to toffee has milk fats and solids in it that keep the parts of the sugar, those sucrose molecules, from fitting together the way they would usually prefer to, a bit like sticking Play-Doh between your Legos and then seeing the fact that they can't really build an organized structure anymore. Now this is a good example of a candy in which the recipe uses material science to keep the sugar from crystallizing and becoming a crystal solid. Another material that uses uh, material and food science tricks to keep sugar from crystallizing and make sure that it stays amorphous or non-organized, it solidifies, is isomalt. This is a type of sugar that's derived from beets, and it's special because instead of just having sucrose sugar building blocks in it, it contains other sugar building blocks. These are made up of the same types of atoms, the same stuff, but put together and organized in a different way so that the building blocks are different shapes and don't fit together very well. These different building blocks of sugar are called isomers, meaning they're made up of the same atoms, but organized in different structures. Introducing different isomers into our isomalt sugar means that when the building blocks can't find the way to fit together, they're blocked from forming an organized crystal structure and instead stay in a disorganized amorphous state. This leads us to having isomalt solids that actually look a lot like the glass you're used to seeing. You can see that it's a shiny, clear structure. There are some fun tricks that you can do with this type of glass in your kitchen. It behaves a lot like the same glasses that are used in windows and cups around you. This is particularly interesting when used in movies because a lot of the time when you see a hero jump through a window, they're not actually jumping through a pane of the same kind of glass in your windows, they're jumping through a sheet of sugar. We can see that our isomalt sugar shatters just like glass the way you'd expect right here at home. So you see we have some isomalt that I've melted and poured out onto our work surface here. It looks just like a sheet of sugar glass. And what we're going to do is shatter it right here with our hands. And you can see that the result is that this actually breaks a lot like you expect any other kind of glass to break. But that's not the only way that this sugar glass acts like other glasses. We can also use some of the tricks used for shaping glass, like glass blowing to make vases, right here in our kitchen using isomalt. So in order to do glass blowing with our isomalt, I have a few supplies that are necessary. I have gloves for handling the hot sugar. So sugar melts in uh, above 150 degrees Celsius, usually around 160 to 180. So I have cotton gloves to insulate my hands from the heat. And then I'll also have latex gloves to keep the sugar from sticking to the cotton. I'll be gathering up a few of our shards here. Now that they're smaller, they should melt more quickly. And I want a puddle of melted isomalt that I can work with like molten glass. Now, I'll be using my culinary torch to be melting down our pile of sugar shards into one puddle of sugar glass melt. This is what I'll be working with in order to do our glass blowing. This might take just a second.
So you can see, as I apply fire to this uh, isomalt, it gets softer and softer. And you can see that it's actually able to get soft enough to flow. So we've melted our sugar into a flat puddle. We let it cool for a second. And now I'm able to gather it up into a ball. Try and detach this completely. Hope it's cool enough to work with. The part that is in contact with the mat now is still melty. So I just gotta get it cool enough that it will detach nicely. So I have a ball of sugar glass and it's a little bit different colored because I carbolized a little bit of the isomalt while melting it, which was an accident. But this means that we're able to shape it and it's going to get harder and harder to shape the cooler it gets because it is a glass and it does harden gradually. So I'm going to shape it into a ball. And now in order to make this a hollow sphere, I'm going to blow air into it. So this is the part that acts a lot like glass blowing. So to do that, I'm first going to make a dent in my sugar ball here. And I have to be careful not to get my gloves stuck on the inside of that. And I have to keep the walls as even as I can manage to keep them because that's going to be very important for blowing a nice big sugar glass sphere. And once I have a nice little cavity in there, I attach it to my pipe. And then in order to seal the bottom so that once I start blowing air in, none of the air escapes out of the bottom, I'm first gonna squeeze it on as tight as I can. And then I'm gonna melt the bottom just a little so that I am able to just squish that on a bit more thoroughly. All right, let's try this. And I can see which parts are expanding faster than the rest because they're warm. And I can use my hand to cool them down a little bit to keep them from popping before the rest. All right, here, let's see if we can get the rest of that glass to go. All right, and now you can see Whoa. we're able to work our air into that hot sugar. And it's basically like blowing up a balloon. So as long as we're constantly pulling from that warm supply of sugar near the top, we're able to keep glowing this big ball of glass. And now I have to watch carefully to make sure that it is still flowing because ooh, <laughs> once it gets too cool and too rigid, it will pop. So you can see that the part of this that had already cooled and gotten far away from the tip has cooled enough to hold its shape even though I lost air pressure in the bottom. So even though I wasn't able to make a nice pretty round dome, I was still able to make something like a, uh, a ball <laughs> shape-ish. <laughs> but for our purposes, because we can do the fun things here as well, I would also like to shatter this. You give me a countdown. Three. Two, one. <laughs> and as you can see, we have shattered it back into shards. Today, we've looked at the fact that sugar can be an amorphous solid as well as a crystalline solid, as long as we keep its building blocks from arranging themselves into crystals. And that if we work with amorphous solids, these sugar glasses behave a lot like the glasses that make up the cups and the windows that we're used to seeing. So. Next time you watch a movie and you see someone break through a window, remember, they could be getting up and eating those shards when they're done. <laughs>